the truth. You can't handle the truth. Welcome, friends, to Monday Minutes. This is the Reality of Health podcast. Today, five foods to avoid. This is by no means a conclusive list. This is just five of the things that I think are terrible for you, for anybody. First one is oil. So all your cooking oils, all your salad oils, anything that you use that is not tallow, which is from beef or ruminant animals, lard, which is from pigs, or ghee, which is from butter. With the exception of very high quality olive oil or the only avocado oil, which is the brand called Chosen Foods. Do not trust anything else. It's all cut with different vegetable oils. Now, with your olive oil, it has to be from a legitimate producer. Generally speaking, it will have a certification on the label. It'll tell you where it's from. It'll tell you when it was bottled. And even though it's not extra virgin, as long as they can prove where it comes from, that's fine. Extra virgin is just first press. That's all that means. The rest of those olive oils from those same producers are just fine. You might use them to cook with or something rather than to just consume with your food or as a salad dressing. Avocado oil, same way. You got to make sure that it's not cut. And the only one that we know of right now is chosen fruits. Everything else is cut. So that means any other oil besides that, I do not believe is healthy for you at all whatsoever. This episode, we're not going to get real in depth with education. We're just putting these out there on why you don't need them. Vegetable and seed oils are absolutely terrible for you. I discussed this in episode 14, the two killers. Vegetable and seed oils are not healthy. They disrupt your immune system, your mental health, your weight, your metabolic activity, your sexual health, your immune system, everything. They harden your cells. I know it sounds weird, doesn't it? But it's true. It actually hardens them. That means cells die. The next one is kale and spinach. But Eric, I've heard my whole life those are healthy. Nope, they're not. Just because it's green and just because it's a vegetable or a plant does not mean it's healthy for you. Would you go eat poison ivy? No. Why? Because you know you would hurt you. Well, kale and spinach hurt you. You just don't feel it right away. It accumulates. It has what's called oxalic acid. Did many of my episodes on this talking about it. But basically, oxalic acid is like Billions and trillions of little razor blades running throughout your body. And your body has to respond to that situation by collecting it as much as it can. And then when it tries to get rid of that collection, comes out through things like eczema or bowel disorders or headaches or sore joints or sore muscles, etc., etc. And the worst part of it makes kidney stones. Oh, yes also hardens in your body all over the place. Takes a lot to get rid of it. So the more you keep putting in, the harder it is for your body to deal with and get rid of. Oh, and just a quick side note on oil. Those vegetable and seed oils can take up to six years to get out of your body fully. Yeah, that long. It can take an entire lifetime to get rid of oxalic acid. The reason why you get the kidney stones is your kidneys are trying to get rid of it. Kale and spinach are two of the highest. Guess what else is high? Ooh, things like almonds. Almonds are not a good nut to consume. The next would be salad dressing. That would be anything that you've purchased. Literally, almost every single thing you can purchase. You need to make your own. There are so many ways to make your own. Do you even need salad dressing? It's not that hard to make. I understand that some of the ones that are maybe your favorites you can get at the store. A lot of those have flavor enhancers. They have things in there to really make your palate hyper. I understand that, you know, using the same old olive oil vinegar or lemon juice and this kind of thing is kind of boring after a while. You want something different. Well, make it yourself. 
That way you're in control of these ingredients. And by the way, what's the point of putting on your salad if it doesn't have any inherent benefit to you? I mean, who cares? If you have a salad for health, but the dressing doesn't do anything for your health, or it's actually counterintuitive. Making your own salad dressing is one of the easiest things that you can do. Next is fried foods. Anything that's fried in anything other than tallow, lard, or ghee. Stay away from it. If you're going to have fried foods, make them yourself. Eric, that is a total mess and it's dangerous. Yep, it is. Almost like the best things are hard to make or they're time consuming or they're dangerous. Maybe that's what makes them so tasty. They're difficult. Maybe that's how it's supposed to be. Difficult to get foods like that. They are using the worst of the worst oils to fry foods. Then they add things in those oils to keep them from breaking down. Everything from silicone to all kinds of other chemicals that stop the degradation of the fats that make up the oil. That is all making its way into the food that you're eating. Not to mention that it's all vegetable and seed oils. So not only are you taking vegetable and seed oils that are not good for you, but then you're superheating them. Does that make any sense? If you've never made French fries at home using tallow, you are in for a treat. It does something different than vegetable seed oils do. It creates a better overall mouthfeel, texture, and flavor. So good. And in some cases, you can use other things. Like let's say, for example, you wanted to have fried potatoes of some kind and some chicken. If you get the chicken breasts or the thighs with the skin still on it, cast iron, pan, or some other vessel that you can get a good sear, all you need is salt on the skin, make sure it's super dry, in the pan, sear it, render all that fat out, cook that chicken fully in whatever way you want, then pull the chicken out, you've got chicken fat, then add your potatoes to that chicken fat, ho 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 ho, so good, so good, and you are in control. Now, if you got really good chicken, organic, pasture-raised only, any other chicken you shouldn't eat, it is that much healthier for you and tastes so much better. Super simple dish to make. The pan's doing all the work and you're left with super tasty food that's healthy. Number five, fast food. Yeah, you knew that one was coming, didn't you? Well, what can you say? Fast food is absolutely terrible for your health. Why are you even doing it? I'm starving, Eric. I'm it's hung, I'm hungry. The kids are hungry. Uh, we got to get some food and it's fast and I can get on the way home and you don't understand my life's so busy. I understand. There are ways around not eating fast food. Let me ask you a question. Is it better to eat fast food because you have to eat knowing that it's detrimental to your health or just maybe making the option to not eat at all? and then wait till you can get to food. There's always that. But I have kids, Eric. We've got hungry people that I have to feed. Okay. If you know you're going from work to home, there's going to be a restaurant in between. You have that in your speed dial. Remember that? Call the restaurant up. Order some food that you know is healthy. Pick it up on the way home. Nowadays, fast food costs the same as a regular restaurant. Some cases, it's more. There's a burger joint that many people have heard of that is now, on average, for one single meal, just for you, is now over $22 without a tip. That is insane. Here's another one for you. Run into the grocery store. I bet you I can run into that grocery store, pick up two items really quickly, go pay, and get out to my car faster than most of the lines that are forming around fast food restaurants. I bet you. You got kids, maybe it's just you, whatever. You could run in there, grab a really high quality yogurt as an example, and maybe run over and grab, I don't know, pre-cooked bacon, something that gives you some chew, maybe some carrots. I don't know, whatever you like. Quickly, two items that you can eat in the car if you're that hungry. Kids in the back seat, give them a yogurt. You already have some plastic spoons in the car. 
they can at least have that on the way home. See, it doesn't take much. You just spent way less money. You're in and out just as fast. And you were in control of your food. These five foods are horrible for your health. They will have major implications, not just now, but in the future. It all builds up. So why not start small? Take these small steps every day. Change your life by what you're putting into your gullet. Yep, I just said gullet. All right, that's it for this Monday. If you don't already know, I do a Monday Minutes and a Wednesday morning episode. And this Wednesday is going to blow your mind. You're going to want to listen. Trust me. If you like the concepts I bring you each week, well, this one's really going to upset the status quo. See you over there in two days. Take care of yourselves.